Hello and welcome to my innovators. Whenever you're going to commit changes to a Git repository, whether it's for a GitOps configuration or some Terraform code or Kubernetes YAML files, you can harness the power of a personalized CI CD pipeline directly on your computer. Yes, it's true. This functionality is made possible through pre commit hooks. These can be used to automate tasks and checks before you make a commit into your repo. So in today's video, I'm going to go deeper into pre-commit hooks, talk about their purpose in improving code quality for your repositories. We're going to talk about the basics of pre-commit hooks, how to set them up on Windows, creating your first simple configuration, and testing the hooks all live in my environment so you can see exactly what it looks like. Let's get at it. Now, if you've not heard of pre-commit hooks before, that's okay. In my nearly three decades of working in tech, very few people are familiar with pre-commit hooks, but they all become believers once they start using them. Pre-commit hooks are scripts that automatically run before the commit is finalized in a version system like Git. Their whole purpose is to act like a checkpoint, making sure that before we actually commit something into the repository, we've checked it against standards and rules and using these scripts to verify what we want in the repo is going into the repo. Some of the biggest benefits of pre-commit hooks are catching errors early so they don't make it into the repository and the subsequent pipeline running in GitHub Actions or GitLab. Pre-commit hooks are awesome at enforcing coding standards and best practices, making sure that all of your spaces and tabs and punctuation are in the right spot. They automate repetitive tasks, things you don't want to have to remember or do every time you're working with your repo. Pre-commit hooks improve code quality because you're able to lint and sanitize the code automatically every time you're working with it. And at the end of the day, I think pre-commit hooks are a great way to prevent broken builds, broken deployments. So you get the benefit in your local pipeline, but also in the pipeline that's shared amongst everyone else. In order to work with pre-commit, you're going to need Python because pre-commit is a Python package. I recommend using Scoop to do that. I've talked about Scoop in a number of my previous videos, but Scoop is a package and application manager for Windows. You can see right here, I'm running Python 3.13.2 directly off the main Scoop bucket. And to install that, it's just a Scoop install Python. However, that's just my take on it. Feel free to use the Windows store, install it using the normal methods off the Python website, whatever it is that you want. Just make sure you have Python on Windows. Once Python's installed, you'll just run a pip install pre-commit. I've already got it here, so it's going to say I have it, but that would install the pre-commit Python package onto your machine. If we run a pre-commit version, we'll see we're on pre-commit version 4.2.0. We know we have pre-commit installed. Let's continue. Pre-commit requires a dot pre dash commit dash config dot YAML file. Whew, that was long in the root of your repository. That's where it's going to look to find its configuration. In front of you, I have an example from my platform repository where I'm running things like Terraform and Kubernetes and a lot of YAML and Markdown and things like that. The first thing I'm telling pre-commit is what to exclude places. I don't want it looking at itself. I don't want it looking at the license file, nor do I want it looking at the git ignore file because those are kind of special use cases. I exclude it so that I don't cause any ruckus in there. I don't want it doing anything to those files. For everything else, all you need to do is create this repos section of the file and then tell it where it can find hooks. Those could be something that you made, but nine times out of 10, it's going to be something you're getting from someone else's GitHub repository elsewhere with a version and the hook ID and any arguments that you want to pass to the hook. Think of this like going to a library. We can look at different repositories throughout the world. We can see what hooks people have published, such as this action lint hook which is going to invoke a tool called ActionLint to look at my GitHub Actions workflows, lint them, and tell me if I have a mistake. Or down below that, we see Markdown Lint, which does a very similar thing. It's going to look at all my Markdown files. It's going to automatically fix any issues I have because I have a flag there saying fix. And it's going to use a configuration file where I've got some overrides. I don't want it just acting out of the box. Inside my Markdown Lint, I just have a little bit of JSON saying, hey, rule Markdown 013. I'd like that one to be false. I don't want to run that rule because it pulls up a false positive frequently in my repo. In order to use pre-commit with my repo, I need to do a pre-commit 
install. And that's going to make sure that pre-commit is going to start looking at its configuration for this repo. It's injected its hooks into our Git hidden folder, the .git folder. And that when we go to commit changes, we're going to automatically invoke pre-commit. Let's go ahead and make a change to cause pre-commit to want to look through a file. I'm just going to go through my pipeline here, change that to a capital A for access. So we have a modified file. I'll now add all of my files here and I'm just changing a letter. So I'm not going to make this all that amazing, but let's just make this a minor change. And we're going to notice that the pre-commit hooks fire off. The first one passes, it's the linting of the GitHub Actions file, which the Hello World YAML file is a GitHub Actions workflow. We've modified that. And so the linting of GitHub Actions executes and says, you passed. This change will be successful. There's no errors with the workflow file that you have. The other checks are skipped because we didn't change a Markdown file or a Python file or a YAML or something like that. So those skip, they aren't needed to be run, which makes pre-commit hooks pretty efficient. If I don't want to wait for a commit, I can force the run of pre-commit hooks automatically by using a pre-commit run dash dash all dash files or select what I want to run. So I'll say pre-commit, go ahead and run everything. It's checking the workflow files. It's checking our readme markdown file. It's going through all of our YAML and other files and saying everything looks good. Everything passes. I like to run this as I'm working on code so that I can get that feedback that yeah, everything looks good. I haven't introduced a syntax issue or my linting is saying, hey, you forgot something. This is a nice thing to run as you're progressing through, knowing that when you go to commit, it's going to run one final time. Let's introduce a non-functional change. So I'll just totally gorp up the syntax of this pipeline and we'll see what it says now. Aha, we failed the check. The pre-commit hook says that won't work. And it even tells us where the mistake was made. So if we go ahead and fix that, I'm just going to undo it save it and run it again. We will have success and we have passed the pre-commit hooks. Hopefully this is making you think, wow, this could be super handy. Checking your workflow files, making your YAML structured properly, making sure everything is going to compile, build, run, plan, whatever it is correctly in the repo before it gets there. Light bulbs are going off, but I have a little bit more. You'll notice that each pre-commit hook has a rev value with a version that we're referencing. And that version is contained in the GitHub repo where the hook lives. We're looking up that version semantically against that repo. Now I could go to every single project and see what the latest version is and try to match that up, but ain't nobody got time for that. Instead, I'm just gonna use a pre dash commit with an auto update command. And that's gonna comb through all of my different hooks, see what the latest version is. And if they're not the latest version, it's gonna go ahead and update it for me. And there we go. You can see it's made several changes. We have versions of multiple hooks that are severely out of date. In some cases, our prettier was version three when it should be version four. Now I'm just scratching the surface with auto update, but I like to run it pretty frequently just to make sure that my hooks are up to date and I'm getting whatever new goodness is coming with them. It also allows me to see if something breaks because I'm running this locally. And if it does, I can fix it locally. When I contribute the code back to the repo, I'm also contributing an updated pre-commit configuration that not only I get to use, but my whole team gets to use because it's right in the root of the repo. The last thing I want to show you is quality of life thing where we make sure that pre-commit hooks are automatically installed every time we clone a new repository. So if you use this command up here, git config dash dash global, which is changing our git configuration here within the machine. And we say we want to initiate our template directory. Where are we going to create a template from for cloning new repositories. We want to put it in the home directory. That's the Windows speak. If you see the tilde, that's meant for Linux boxes. So Windows users use dollar sign home and then dot git dash template. Running this will update our git configuration silently so that git knows where to check for that template. Once we have that command, we can use the pre-commit init dash template dir directory with the same location, the dollar sign home directory dot get dash template. And we run that, it's going to go ahead and inject something that automatically makes sure that every time you clone repositories to your machine, pre-commit hooks will automatically be installed. I think that's a lifesaver. It means that every time I clone someone's repo, I'm automatically going to run their pre-commit hooks. I'm not going to have to remember to use pre-commit install, but if that breaks your flow in some way, you don't have to turn this on. Two thumbs up. There you go. That's the basics of pre-commit hooks. They're not that hard. And I think once you get to using them, you'll be as addicted as I am. 
As a recap, we talked about the purpose and benefits of pre-commit hooks. We set up pre-commit hooks on our Windows machine using Python and pip. We then built a simple configuration and played and test around with that. In addition to showing how to do testing, auto update, and make sure that all future clones are initialized by default. Thank you so much. You're super snazzy. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace and love.